Hello YouTube, this is Eric from Coder Snacks. Today, we're going to talk about Counting Sword. Let's get started. Counting Sword is fascinating because it lets us break the rules. We're taught in computer science courses that the optimal sorting algorithm is O of n log n in the number of elements we have. But Counting Sword lets us do better. Sometimes. As always, let's consider some questions. What sizes of strings should we consider? What characters do we expect in the string? A through Z? ASCII? Unicode? What do we mean by sorted? It's simple for A through Z in lowercase, but how do we sort non-alphabetical characters? Or uppercase and lowercase? For our purposes, the length of the string could be large, but fits in memory. We'll assume ASCII characters for now, and we'll sort in ascending order of the output of the ORD function, or in the same order that sorted returns. First, why on earth would we even want to do this? This example seems contrived, but there are some practical uses. Often, it's useful to canonicalize an object, and sorting can be a great way to do that. For example, if we want to determine whether two strings are anagrams of each other, instead of trying to permute one string to find a match, we can sort them both and see if they're equal. Okay then, why shouldn't I just use sorted? Sorted is a perfectly valid solution. The runtime complexity of the sort is O of n log n, where n is the length of the string. Can we do better than that? Let's look at why sorting is O of n log n. First, O of n log n what? We're talking about runtime, which is bounded by the number of list element comparisons that need to be done to find the sorted order of the list in the worst case. Why does sorting require O of n log n comparisons in the worst case? Here's a sketch of the proof. If you have n unique elements, there are n factorial possible arrangements of those elements, and we don't know which one of these is the correct sorted order. The only thing we can do to find out is do comparisons. Each time you do a comparison, in the best case, you split the number of arrangements in half. For example here, we have a toy example with four elements. With four elements, there are 24 possible arrangements. If we compare A and B, since the elements are unique, there are two cases, A is greater than B, which leaves us with these 12 possible arrangements, or B is greater than A, with these 12. If at each step we find the perfect comparison and always split the space in half, it will take us log 2 of n factorial comparisons to find our sorted list. How do we get from log 2 of n factorial to n log n? There's a formula called Stirling's approximation that says that natural log of n factorial equals n natural log of n minus n plus O of natural log of n, which, with the base changed for our purposes, is this, which is O of n log n. In big O notation, the smaller terms fall out, and so the n term and the O of log n term drop. Log base 2 of n factorial is O of n log n. Okay, so we've just proved that sorting is O of n log n, but we're still saying we can do better? Sometimes. When we talk about sorting, we almost always mean comparison sorting. But what if we had a kind of sorting where we didn't do comparisons? Welcome to counting sort. We go through each element of our string and count it in an auxiliary data structure. At the end, we take the counts and reform the string in sorted order. We don't compare the individual elements directly, allowing us to bypass the O of n log n limitation at the cost of another limitation. Here's some code. We initialize a default dict, iterate through all the characters in the string, incrementing counts of how many times we see each character. At the end, we sort the keys and reconstruct the string. As long as we're using collections, though, we can improve on this by using collections.counter, which does all of this text counting for us. Here's the code. What's the runtime complexity of this? It's O of n plus k log k, where k is the number of possible different characters. We're still sorting the characters at the end. Is k log k better than n log n? If the string is long enough that there are duplicates, yes. For very short strings, no, but if this string is very short, we're not worried about the runtime anyway. This will still run very quickly. It's when the string is megabytes or gigabytes long that the k log k versus n log n trade-off helps us. Can we make this better? If we know the range of characters, in our example that they're ASCII, instead of using a hash table, we can use a list and avoid the k log k sort. We'll make a list with the correct number of characters, for ASCII 0 to 255. We'll count the letters the same way as before, but now we don't have to do a sort of characters at the end. We can just loop through the characters. This is O of n plus k. 
This, of course, breaks if we use something outside of the range of ASCII. Great, sorting that's better than n log n. Why don't we always use this? Because sometimes that k is a problem. Let's say we're sorting numbers. How big is our table? What if the numbers are large, say billions or larger? That's a lot of different items. O of n plus k looks pretty bad now. Additionally, you can have objects such as strings or doubles where the number of possible items is infeasible to make a table for. Counting sort is best when the range of values is limited, letters in the alphabet or birth years, for example. Think about how many values you're sorting and what the range is, and then decide whether O of n log n is better than O of n plus k. When in doubt, default to normal sorting. We only have one challenge for you this time. There are a few variations of counting sorts. One is called radix sort. Try implementing radix sort to sort a bunch of arbitrary integers. Next time, we're going to work with some larger data. Given a file of two-dimensional points that may not fit in memory, how do we find the k closest to the origin? I hope you got something out of this video. If you have any questions, comments, something I've missed, or problems you want answered or covered, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, it would be great if you liked the video, subscribed, or both. I really appreciate it. See you here next time on Coder Snacks.